Hey my dear data friends, it's Nicola from Data Mozart. Welcome to the latest video in our Mastering DP500 exam series. Uh, this time instead of Power BI we will jump a little bit to Azure Synapse as a huge topic also of DP500 exam and I'll try to explain you uh, different components of Synapse Analytics architecture uh, with special focus on uh, Azure Synapse Analytics pools. So stay tuned as we are preparing to kick it off. Okay, at the very beginning I want to ask you a simple question. Do you recognize the object on your screen? Yes, that's the famous Swiss army knife. Uh, you can cut the paper, you can open a bottle of wine uh, or beer or cut some smaller items and all of that using just one single tool. So if you are asking yourself now what on earth does a Swiss army knife has in common with uh, Synapse Analytics? Well, you can think of Synapse Analytics as a single tool that can satisfy all your data workload needs. Uh, for example, do you need to import data from multiple different sources? Synapse can do that. Do you need to transform data before serving it? Synapse can do that too. Uh, do you need to store the data? Synapse, Synapse can do it for you. Do you need to query non-relational data or even files directly from your Azure Data Lake storage uh, using plain old T-SQL? Yes, that's also possible. Uh, do you need to build machine learning models? Synapse can manage this for you. Uh, finally, do you need to create your Power BI reports straight from the Synapse? Yes, that's also that uh, something that you can done directly from Azure Synapse Analytics. As I said, Synapse uh, represents, uh, I like to think about Synapse as a Swiss army knife for your data uh, analytic workloads. Now let's jump in and explain why is Synapse Analytics a Swiss army knife uh, for all your data workloads. So first of all, for SQL professionals, there are two pools in Azure Synapse. A dedicated SQL pool, which is the official successor of the former Azure SQL Data Warehouse. And then there is also a serverless SQL pool. Uh, developers familiar with Python, Scala or uh, Spark SQL can leverage usage of Apache Spark pools for processing large volumes of data. Uh, when it comes to storage, there are also a bunch of possible options to choose from, uh, starting with traditional relational way of storing data in SQL Data Warehouse, then Spark Tables, uh, Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2, uh, Data Lake, or all the way to uh, non-relational document style storage mode in Cosmos DB. Uh, you can also orchestrate your data, uh, use the data movement using Azure Data Factory pipelines, and mapping data flows. Uh, finally, you can quickly also visualize your data using, for example, uh, Power BI as a reporting tool. So now that you know this underlying architecture, at least from a high level perspective of Azure Synapse Analytics, let's talk about Synapse Analytic pools as a core part of, of uh, the, 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 the whole architecture. Uh, there are three different engines within the Synapse workspace. Uh, two of them are SQL based or SQL flavored, dedicated SQL pool and serverless SQL pool. While the third is based on Apache Spark technology and that is Apache Spark pool. Also two of them are provisioned, uh, dedicated SQL pool and Apache Spark pool. While the third serverless SQL pool works like a serverless solution. Uh, Let's first understand how the serverless SQL pool fits within the data analytic workloads picture. Essentially what a serverless SQL pool could do for you is hardly beatable. Uh, you can query data directly within your data lake without any need to tra uh, transfer or copy data uh, anywhere from there. Uh, moreover, you can query the data in the data lake by writing plain old T-SQL statements. So CSV, JSON files, Parquet files, everything is included. Since it is a serverless system, you don't need to set up any kind of infrastructure in advance, clusters, things like that. You can literally start querying your data as soon as your workspace is created. Uh, the serverless SQL pool works as a standalone poly-based service, so there are no any costs for the resources reserved. Uh, you are only being charged for the volume of data processed by your query. So we say that this is a typical paper query model. The amount of data processed, this is the, this is the uh, uh, 
amount that you will pay in the end. Uh, keep in mind that the minimal billing threshold is 10 megabytes. Uh, so uh, either uh, if you have queries that are uh, processing less amount of uh, data than 10 megabytes, you will be charged as this threshold was reached. Um, this threshold uh, doesn't apply to metadata queries, so you don't have to worry uh, that you will be charged uh, at all if you execute something like select star from sys.objects and so on. Uh, having this tool under your belt lets you think about an indefinite number of possi uh, possible approaches. Uh, first of all, you can quickly perform ad hoc queries over data in the data lake before you decide what is the best possible way to uh, gain more, more insights from it. Uh, you can also build an additional logical layer, a kind of abstract layer, a kind of abstract data warehouse on top of raw or non-relational data without moving data uh, to some physical place. And finally, you can also transform data directly in uh, the data lake uh, and consume it directly from, let's say, Power BI. As I already mentioned, using T-SQL to query data directly from the data lake uh, uh, and uh, you can also write T-SQL queries to retrieve data from Spark tables and Cosmos DB. Uh, when it comes to next pools, dedicated SQL pool, unlike with the serverless SQL uh, pool where you don't need to provision any Azure resources, when you are using a dedicated SQL pool, you must set up uh, you must set up some kind of infrastructure in advance. Uh, even though a dedicated SQL pool is mostly used uh, for relational data workloads and you may think of it as a SQL server on steroids, uh, the underlying architecture is quite different as a dedicated pool uh, reaps the benefits of using massively parallel processing architecture. And this architecture supports efficient processing of large amounts of, the, of data as your query will be split into the multiple smaller chunks and each chunk uh, is uh, then sent to one of uh, many compute nodes that work in parallel to uh, process your query as a whole as fast as possible. Okay, so last but not least, Spark, uh, when it comes to integration within Azure Synapse Analytics, Spark is usually leveraged in the following tasks. First one is machine learning. Uh, because Spark brings MLlib uh, library that you can use directly from the Spark pool in Synapse. Uh, then also data science. Spark includes a special distribution of Python language called Anaconda that contains various data science related packages. And finally, data engineering. Uh, when you're building data pipelines for processing large volumes of data, Spark may help you by providing support for multiple programming languages such as C Sharp, Scala, Spark SQL, Python, and of course, uh, uh, relevant libraries for data processing tasks. Uh, same as dedicated SQL pool, Spark Analytic pool needs to be provisioned as well. Uh, that means you are paying not only for the processing power that you are using uh, for uh, handling your queries, also, you are also paying for data storage. Uh, in the end, the main advantage of using Spark pool is the ability to leverage the concept of Spark Notebooks, which I will show you in one of the next videos. That's it for today. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below and consider subscribing to uh, Data Mozart YouTube channel and enjoy more helpful and useful data related videos. That's it for today. See you next time.